everyone. Welcome back to another Q&A. We are sitting down with Murray today to discuss uh, the sermon on Sunday. Uh, Murray, for those who maybe haven't had the chance to hear your sermon, would you mind giving us a quick recap? Sure. Galatians 1, 11 through 17, we used as a text to answer the question, can we resist God's grace? And we talked about how, uh, really from the angle of, can I mess it up? If God has set his loving gaze on me, it does my sin, uh, is my sin such that it gets in so much of the way that I can actually push God away from me? And the answer, of course, is no, uh, that, um, that God's grace uh, pursues us and is effectual to save us. Yeah. It got, it got me thinking on, um, there are a lot of people, and I think even I go through waves where I feel like I need to earn my salvation or my approval or I need to step up my game. Mm-hmm. But how might me looking back and realizing that uh, I indeed can't resist God's grace help me in kind of affirming that I also can't earn his approval or earn yeah. my salvation? Yeah, that's a great question. And in and, and... And if we think that, uh, if we feel isolated that we're asking those questions, we, have, uh, we can have good company because the people at Galatia struggle with the exact same thing, which is why Paul wrote the letter. Um, he wrote the letter because the folks were being taught and believed that they were begun by God's grace. They were saved initially by God's grace, but they were preserved by their own works. And so that's why Paul begins the letter the way that he does. He says, look, let me tell you about my own conversion and the story of God's irresistible grace pull on me. And also how throughout the letter, uh, he develops the theme that if God's grace, initial saving grace is irresistible, then it is, uh, it is only then logical and also biblical, that his continuing saving grace is irresistible, that he, that those he saves initially, he will completely save. We also, like in our culture today, right, we have people really struggling um, with their identity, whether that's maybe their physical gender identity or even just their kind of who am I and my purpose. How would you encourage someone kind of just struggling with who I am, what's my purpose, and seeing how going back to God's irresistible grace on their life just shows their value, their being made in God's image, and how that can be an encouragement to them? Oh, boy. What, that's a wonderful question uh, because all of us on some level wrestle with um, do I matter and to what degree do I matter? Um, and I think the uh, understanding how God, through Christ, um, saved us, meaning that he, before the foundation of the world, purposed to send his only son to rescue us from our sins, not only is a statement of our great value and worth, but... Um, forms the foundation, um, motivation, and enablement uh, to understand uh, our great worth, that, that we were so uh, valuable to God, so precious to Him, that He um, gave everything to purchase us. I mean, what would you say? Yeah, I, I mean, I think about how we can get so isolated in ourselves that we forget the bigger picture of like God seemed in his glory in his mercy to say, look, I value you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you my son. I'm going to give you my life so that I can have possession of you so that you can actually possess me Mm -hmm. uh, and fulfillment of your purpose and your created being. Um, And yeah, like I think like we've said on here before, you can't, accomplish your purpose or understand your fulfillment without that being found in Christ. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you for your encouraging sure. word. Uh, someone was leaving yesterday. They told me uh, they wish that sermon could have lasted two hours. Uh, so um, as always, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions about a sermon or just a topic in general, we would love to discuss them. But we thank you for your support and listening. Uh, here at